Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today I want to take a deep dive into Ad Location SketchUp 2024. So right here, right now, as in me recording this video, it's April 2024. SketchUp for Desktop 2024 was just released, uh, and the change to Ad Location is pretty significant. It works way different than the old Ad Location did. So this may hold true in future versions. I don't know if you're in the future running 25, 26, 28, probably not 27, I don't know. This may still work, uh, but it is a significant difference from like 23, 22. So I wanna run through it and show there's some organizational tools, some, some changes to how it works that are awesome that I really want to take a look at. So let's hop in, look at ad location, SketchUp for desktop, 2024 plus. All right, so I got an empty model here. I'm just gonna hop right in and we are going to import some geometry. Um, let's get this, get my, fill the screen up here like that. And then we're gonna go to file, add location. All right, so when add location pops up, first thing it should do is it's gonna drop this pin somewhere in the world. Uh, this is based on maybe where you're at or something like, so right now I'm, I'm in Longmont and it's dropping me in Longmont and that's cool, but that's not what I wanna bring in. This is a flat chunk of land right here. I don't wanna do that. I wanna find some bumps. Fortunately, I'm in Colorado and all you gotta do if you're in Colorado on the front range is move west. So we're gonna come right over here to where we got some bumps. Now you'll notice when I panned over, I'm just zooming and panning using my, my scroll wheel and my mouse button. When I get over here, it says, do you want to move your location pin? Your location pin is your origin of your drawing in reference to the imported geometry. So right now, if I was to import this chunk of geometry right here, this, this location right here, it would show up way down the red axis from my origin, right? So it'd be somewhere way over here. That's okay, but Really, ideally, I want my origin to be near what I'm importing. So I'm gonna say, okay, move my pin here. That's gonna drop my pin right here and I can actually specifically place it where I want. I'm place right at this crossroads right here. Why? I don't know, just seems like a good place to put it. And zoom in and actually go, let's go a little more specific right there. All right, so what I'm doing there is I'm placing my origin as reference to the geometry I'm about to import. The other thing I can reference there is north. I can see that north is this orange arrow pointing up. Uh, and that's about all the information I have on here. I do need to pick my pin, put it in my right spot, because once I go in to start picking tiles to import, I can't move that pin anymore. Not a lot of options on here. If I have a specific location I want to search for, I can type that in right here. Uh, if I want to toggle showing the model on and off, if I, I'm starting not from a blank model like I am, but if I'm starting with an existing model, I can say, show my model on the screen, and it will pop up and actually show my model relative to where my origin is. In this case, all I got is Teddy. So Teddy's showing up somewhere down there as a little, little there she is, a little tiny person right there. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say, okay, this is good, this looks good. It's, I wanna import geometry around here. So I'm gonna hit continue. All right, so this is going to take me into a map where I can actually pick the geometry I wanna import. So I'm gonna choose a larger chunk of land. I'm just gonna grab my handles. This works exactly as you would expect it to. Uh, I can move my handles either by the side or by the corner to make this bigger. If I wanna move my selection window around, I have this move handle I can click on and drag wherever I need to. So that works really good. That's simple, easy, get the geometry you want in here. Over here to the left, I have two options. I can import a 2D plane, which is just gonna be a flat rectangle that's this size with an image draped over the top. That's it. Pull that in, uh, you, can, you can work on that. I can also add a 3D mesh if I want, and I can bring in both or just one if I want. So in this case, I wanna bring in a 3D mesh, and you can see once you have 3D mesh on, you have access to this slider right here. With this slider, I can choose how dense I want this mesh that I pull in. So I can say low, which would be nice big triangles making this mesh, uh, or up to high, which is gonna be much smaller triangles. So the, the mindset, I imagine a lot of people go, well, I'll just bring in high all the time. And that's okay, if, you're, if, you're, if you work on like lots for individual houses, high is probably fine, it's gonna bring in a lot of fine detail, that's probably good for like, you know, a quarter acre, acre lot, something like that. But if you're pulling in like an entire section of highway that you're gonna build a bridge on or something like that, you may wanna go a little bit lower. 
Don't bring in extra geometry you don't need. Uh, SketchUp 24 is the fastest version of SketchUp we've ever released. It is definitely deals with geometry better than ever before, but there's no point in bringing in extra geometry if you don't actually need to see it, if you don't actually need to reference it. So I'm gonna, for this, I'm gonna go ahead and go with medium. I don't know what that's gonna look like exactly, but I'm gonna bring it in and we're gonna see. Down below that, I have the ability to choose my texture map. Do you wanna do satellite imagery or street map? Street map is basically what you see on your phone if you're navigating, you know, not, no detail here. This is pretty pretty vague information. I'm gonna stick with satellite imagery. I do have the ability to say low, medium, or high resolution. I'm gonna stick with medium here too. Again, the more geometry, the higher resolution image, the bigger the model, the slower the import, that kind of thing. So just something to keep in mind. Down here, I do have the ability to swap between Bing and Digital Globe. Uh, depending on where you're at, depending on the geometry you're trying to import, one or the other may have better uh, you know, resolution, better imagery, or may exist in some places, not in others. So I'm gonna stick with Bing on this and I'm gonna say import site context. Uh, it's gonna give me a little, little working on it thing. You see it said it brought in four images. We're gonna see what that means in just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and hit close add location and zoom out here. There we go. That's see, that's why this, this feature is fun in Colorado because we get to import geometry like this. Um, so that's pretty cool, big 3D image right here. Uh, you'll see when I first click on this, it does show up in this red container. That's telling me that this is locked. If all you're doing is dropping a building onto this space, you may just leave it locked and that's fine, leave it there forever. I wanna go in, dive in and kinda experience or, or see exactly what got pulled in. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click unlock. This red container is gonna turn blue and now I could actually double click to enter that container if I want to. Before we go any deeper though, I do wanna come over here to tags and see how this imported. So I have this geolocation content tag uh, or folder. In there I have a 3D terrain folder and in there I actually have a tag with my first import. So I can actually toggle that on and off and I can see it turn on and off. You'll also notice that I did get that solar north line came in and I can actually see it there. All right, let's dive into what this is. I'm gonna, again, have this top level. I'm gonna double click, open it, and then inside there, I have another container. I'm gonna double click to go into that container. Click in there, I have a third container. I'm gonna double click and go into there. This container, you can see, has multiple groups inside here. These are those four, remember I said four images, one, two, three, and four? These are the four images that imported. So that chunk of land I grabbed actually lapped over multiple tiles in add location, but it imported all four of those. So these are the actual imported tiles. If I back up a container, this is the full import. That's this. If I back up another container. This is my 3D terrain container. Back up one more container. This is on the outside. This is my geolocation. So that seems kind of silly for one import, but let's go ahead and add a second import to it. And you'll make a little more sense how this is organized and why. So I'm gonna go back up to file, go back to add location again. Um, it's gonna show me what already exists in this model. It tells me this is already geolocated, so I can't go search for a different location because this model's already there. That makes sense. If, if I'm, again, brand new model won't show this, but for geolocation, I do have the ability to throw out my geolocation, so I could hit the garbage right here, and it'll dump it, and I can pick a new spot to lo locate this model, but for right now, this is perfect because I wanna import additional context models. When I zoom in here, or when I come in here originally, initially, it's showing the same import I already had. It's all, everything saved, same mesh, same style, everything's the same. So if I wanna just add to that, I can grab this and I can move this to say, bring in another piece. Now this is the cool part, I really like this. Cause what this will do is snap. I'm making that noise by the way, that's, that's my mouth. Uh, it's gonna snap right to that previous import and then I can say import site context. So what this is gonna do, probably four again, yeah, same, cause it's the same size. Uh, and it's gonna import that and I can close add location and I can see it doubled my geometry here. It's still a single container, I double click. All right, and that's gonna go inside of, so I just went from the geolocation container to the 3D terrain container. If I double click in there, now I'll see these two. This is site one, site two, and if I go into site two, double click, site two I'll see is also, I just caught it right on the edge, three different pieces. 
Now this is cool because maybe site two is just there for context. I don't actually need it when I'm working. Maybe when I'm working, I, I need site one because this is where, where I'm actually gonna be putting my building, placing my building, that sort of thing. Site two is just for maybe if I do a render like this, I wanna have this mountain in the back or something like that. What I can do is I can work most of the time with site two just turned off, right? I can go and do all my work like this and then only when it's time to output, only for specific things do I ever wanna come in and turn this additional context on. Now I can keep going too, I could just come in here and I don't have to do one per import either, watch this, I can go to add location. Again, we're good. Um, import context, that's fine. And uh, let's go ahead and grab this piece right here and import it. And when it's done, rather than saying, okay, I'm done, let's get out of here, let's say import more. And I'm just choosing to import these tiles same. I could actually resize this tile if I wanted. Let's go ahead and import one more right there in the same session. I could have done that from the beginning. So I could have uh, gone in and imported multiple tiles right there from the beginning, but I chose not to. So now we look at that and go, okay, see, look at this. Now I have these four different sites. So I could back this all the way down to just this right here. And then, you know, maybe, maybe this is my view that my working model. And then when I need it, I can go turn these other pieces on for output for more additional context. But they're so awesome how it's how it's uh, automatically broken into, into different pieces here. Makes it super easy to choose which pieces of ad location you want at any given time. Uh, makes it very, very easy to keep your model snappy, not only show what you need and uh, hide the rest and have it ready for you when you do need it. So that was just a little bit deeper. We just went a little bit deeper with that location than we did in that other video. Um, not, at, not a little bit, we actually covered everything. That was just about everything. We didn't do 2D. 2D is the same as 3D, but with less. So it's just flat. So uh, yeah, check that out. Try add location 2024. See if you got questions. See if there's features that I didn't mention, maybe, that you need to, to, to let me know about. Uh, take a look at that. And, and let me know what you guys think of the new ad location. If you like that video, click like down below. If you haven't already do, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, do leave us a con comment. Let us know what you think of this new feature. Is there something that you think would make it even better? Let us know about that. We're not developers, but we like to hear those ideas and we try to pass them along if they're good ideas. Uh, and again, how do you use it? What do you do? What does your workflow look like? How do you does the, your use of ad location differ from mine? Tell us all about it in the comments. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.